quote from Ingo Swan, I am not the first to see that we are not alone in the universe. Can you imagine a clairvoyant man being able to look all the way to Jupiter with just his mind's eye and provide accurate scientific data? Ingo Swan did just that. Not only did he report facts from Jupiter's atmosphere long before the Pioneer spacecraft confirmed them, Swan also saw something on the moon that is guaranteed to send a shiver down your spine. We are not alone in the universe. Ingo Swan is what is called a medium or a psychic. Swan can't see the future and he doesn't predict lottery numbers. His exceptional talent has developed a special kind of consciousness projection where psychic vision is projected to a faraway place. Remote viewing is an ability that was studied even by the CIA and other clandestine organizations, particularly in the 1960s and 70s. Along with other psychic mediums, Swan developed various techniques to explore every conceivable location on Earth and in the universe using only the mind's eye. What Swan and his colleagues saw in the process shocked them and put the CIA on notice. Swan received a strange visit one day, disappeared completely from the scene for days, and was then silenced by the CIA. Many years later, he breaks his silence and finally speaks out about the monstrous things that happened to him in the clutches of the national security agencies. An Extraordinary Medium As a child, Ingo Swan had the unique gift of seeing distant things and places. In the 1970s, Swan participated in some scientific research on remote viewing and collaborated with dozens of researchers from the US and Europe at the famous Stanford Research Institute. In 1977, Reader's Digest published a report on Ingo Swan's successes in remote viewing experiments. In the experiment, the medium had been able to transport himself to practically any place in the world, describing places, streets, and surroundings perfectly. In further experiments, the medium was supposed to influence plants with mental activity or change the temperature of its environment. Swan also succeeded with ease. When astronomers at the Stanford Research Institute came up with the idea of having Swan examine various locations in the solar system, he hesitated. No one would be able to confirm his distant sightings if he mentally beamed himself to distant worlds. Ingo Swan feared his sightings would later be challenged and declined an offer to project his consciousness to Jupiter. The last thing Swan wanted was to be called a fraud. That was in 1973, and a short time later, NASA announced the launch of the Pioneer probe, and it was to study Jupiter in particular. Satisfied that the probe might confirm his findings, Swan agreed to participate in the research after all. He found himself in a lab at Stanford, looking toward Jupiter. Sitting comfortably on Earth, Swan described Jupiter's hydrogen mantle, rotating storms raging on the surface like massive cyclones, high infrared readings, ice crystals in the atmosphere, and the colors of the clouds. What would you think if I told you now that Pioneer has confirmed almost all of these observations? Incredible, isn't it? Still, a small hitch remained because Swan saw something Pioneer didn't. He saw a ring around Jupiter, similar to Saturn's ring but this was much smaller and closer to the planet. According to Swan, this ring was made up of dust and tiny asteroids, but neither Pioneer 10 nor Pioneer 11 saw anything that even remotely matched Swan's description. Was Ingo Swan wrong about Jupiter's ring? Well, no, I can tell you that much, because Jupiter's wafer-thin ring was also confirmed a few years later by a technically better equipped probe. After that, Ingo Swan had a reputation as an outstanding medium and received many orders from science and private fans of his work. The Shock of His Life In March 1975, something happened that changed Ingo Swan's life forever. At 3 o'clock in the morning, he received a phone call. The voice on the other end asked him to come to Washington to the Museum of National History. He was specifically instructed to be in the lobby of the museum at 12 noon. A little surprised, but also curious, Swan showed up for his blind date. There, he was approached by a stranger who looked like he belonged in the military. Without speaking a word, he handed Swan a note that said, Do not speak or ask questions. This is for our safety as well as yours. Please follow me. The mysterious man led Ingo to a car where another man was waiting. Ingo refers to these men in his book as the twins. The other man searched Ingo 
and asked him if he would be willing to work on a project that required absolute silence. When Swan agreed, the twins put a bag over his head and the car sped off to an unknown location. After some time, they boarded a helicopter and flew on. Upon landing, Swan was led into a building and only then was the medium allowed to see where he was again. Although no one introduced themselves personally, Swan knew full well that he was in a CIA laboratory. Another man told Ingo Swan about a secret remote viewing project and promised to pay him $1,000 per day in cash for his services. Swan had agreed to stay in the building for the entire duration of the project. He was not allowed to make any phone calls and agreed to keep quiet about anything that could happen for at least 10 years. Curious, Swan again agreed and so began an adventure that he could never have imagined in his wildest dreams. A Gruesome Journey to the Moon Swan was amazed that the CIA, of all people, asked him to turn his consciousness to the moon. They showed Swan some areas of the moon and instructed him to use his skills of distance vision to accurately describe certain areas. In his book, published many years later, the medium reported on his experiment. Well, I was asked by some very mysterious people to do some remote viewing sessions over the moon, and they offered to pay me money. Before that, I was paid very little for most of the work I was involved in, so I said I would do it. And then, in these remote viewing sessions, I saw some things on the moon that I thought were really strange, like people there, and big structures and lots of activity and so on. At first, the CIA agents showed him places where there was nothing special, just big cliffs, craters, dunes of white-gray powder. Then, the medium shifted his consciousness to a place that was immediately different. Swan was speechless at first, then told of tracks on the lunar surface made by using machines like tractors on the ground. Other patterns indicated wind activity, but there was not a breath of air on the moon. Swan also noticed a strange crater filled with green haze. Curious to see what was producing the light, he approached the object in his mind. What he saw startled him. It was a large structure that resembled an airfield, with hangars, towers, roads, and machinery. Everywhere were visible signs of industrial activity. A quote from Swan. Well, we were taught for many years that the moon was a dead place, with no water, no air, nothing. I saw air there. At least I don't think I commented about water on the moon, but it's only in the last two years that science has finally admitted that there is water and an atmosphere on the moon. But in the 60s, it was denied. Everyone was taught to believe it was a dead, airless place. Swan moved to another location and saw structures emitting light in different colors. As he stepped closer, the windows of the domes became clearer. Again, he could see the same green haze in the structure. But this time, he decided to look through the windows at the source. In the dome, he saw humanoid figures that looked almost like people, and they were clearly working on something. Suddenly, two of these creatures stopped their activity. The two instructed their cronies to go inside, and Swan mentally followed them. Just as he was about to project his distant vision through a window, the strange entities inside turned around. Swan was startled. He felt and saw that these beings could see his consciousness. Swan was frightened and told one of the twins that they could see him. The CIA agent instructed Swan to come back quickly. Swan opened his eyes and said, you already knew they were clairvoyant. The only answer he got was that the experiment was over, and it was. Ingo Swan was taken out of the building, flown to Washington, and had to remain silent for 10 years. 10 years, Ingo Swan had to remain silent. Swan suffered years after the event from what he had seen. The aliens had shocked him. Swan had the pictures of the moon landings in his head, knew from official reports that not much more than rock and dust had been found on the moon. He could hardly talk to anyone about what he had seen. Only the closest confidants were privy to it. With some very good mediums and friends, Swan later ventured into a few more similar attempts. Well protected, the mediums projected their spirits on various planets and into the universe. What they saw was monstrous. After the end of his silence, Swan published several books, and it unfolded as one might expect. No one could confirm his experiences. Some considered Swan a genius, others a charlatan. Swan wrote, among other things, one really can't avoid it anymore. There is the question of why the Soviet Union and the United States did not return to the moon in the 1970s. 
when they spent all that money to get there and colonize it. They suddenly stopped, and the public should ask the question why that was. Ingo Swan was not entirely alone in this view after all. Over the years, a community of media, ufologists, and whistleblowers came together, all reporting similar sightings or secret information from activities at NASA. Swan had clearly seen aliens operating a base on the moon in the late 1970s, and the CIA knew about it. According to Swan, there are several species outside Earth of which he has seen traces on the moon and elsewhere. However, Swan warned against attempts to contact these beings. In particular, the medium experienced the aliens on the moon as hostile. These observations may explain why Russia suddenly abandoned plans to colonize the moon in the 1970s and the U.S. discontinued the Apollo program in the 1980s and has never returned to the moon since. Swan wrote six successful books. Six others contained such explosive information that no publisher would publish the writings. There are many more exciting videos to come, so click subscribe now and keep watching.